All right, in this video, I'm going to continue on and go from uh, CCDs to CMOS architecture. I just finished discussing the CCD architecture, and now I'm going to discuss CMOS. CMOS architecture. Architecture. Okay, let me draw the same array, the same silicon array. I'm going to try to draw it a little bigger because there's a nuance I want to show. So that's a horrible square. I wish I had a square drawing tool, but I don't with this program. Okay. There, I'm dividing up into pixels. This way. And then a third. So still, we have this way is the row, and the, this, this is a column. This is a column. That's the nomenclature you'll use. Okay, let's draw the same photon that I drew for the CCD coming in and create an electron hole pair and that pixel. Okay, what I'm going to do is instead of shuttling that charge all the way down and out through a serial shift register, I'm going to integrate that charge on a capacitance right there in the pixel. There's, that's, that's a, there's a capacitance there right there in the pixel. And I'm going to send that to an amplifier. So there's the amplifier. It's not a diode. That's not. I'm not trying to draw a diode there. There's the amplifier. Each pixel has that. Each pixel has a capacitor and an amplifier. It's actually more complicated than that, but that's the basic picture. Each pixel has its own capacitor where it integrates. This is the integration capacitor. Integration capacitor. And it has its own amplifier. And actually, those amplifiers are usually source followers. Source. It doesn't have to be. But over here, let me draw the depiction of a source follower. So a source follower is you come in to, oops, there's a NMOS there. You have a VDD. And you have some resistor here. So you have VN. And here you have Vout. Actually, this resistor is usually uh, diode connected transistor, but anyway, basically that's the idea. So let's go back to this pixel. That electron comes in on that and integrates on that uh, capacitor, and by Q equals CV, we know what the voltage is going to be here, and then we know the transfer function, so we know the voltage right there. And instead, and this is where it's unfortunate this is not a 3D drawing because there are metal lines running that you can't see here. But instead of shuttling charge down, we're just going to read that voltage straight down the column out on a bus. Okay, let me scroll down a little bit. That voltage is going to come out, and it's going to come to an ADC, analog to digital converter. Let's say in our case we have one ADC per column. ADC, ADC, and we send that voltage, that analog voltage, right into the ADC. Uh, let's say that we, we sent in a signal saying we want all of the values for this, for this row here. Okay. So each one of those ADCs is going to get the voltage coming out. And it's going to convert it to a digital voltage, uh, a digital signal, and that'll get read to the computer. Let me look at my notes here. In many designs, you'll have a multiplexer here that will send multiple uh, columns to a single ADC, but this isn't a bad approximation where I'm, I'm having one ADC per channel. Per, I'm sorry, one ADC per column. Uh, these ADCs for uh, consumer applications are usually 8-bit ADCs, so they encode from 0 to 250, uh, 255. But the, the, the bits can be much higher in um, many other applications. They're much higher than that for space applications. Uh, and actually, let me make a point that the major difference between this design, the CMOS design, and the CCD is that instead of having one output, one amplifier all the way at the end, we're putting the amplifier on each pixel. And that's nice. Some people are now, in fact, even putting the ADC in each pixel. So you would have the Ampl the, the, the capacitor to an amplifier going to the ADC 
and then you would just read a digital value out of each pixel, and that may be one of the next big trends in uh, CMOS imaging, but it's not there quite yet. Okay, what are the virtues and vices of CMOS detectors? So, CMOS detectors, CMOS image imagers, CMOS image sensor, CIS, CMOS image sensor. Well, virtues, this is just pretty much the converse of what they were for the uh, CCD imager, but I'm going to write them out anyway. One is they're low power. That is probably, uh, for me at first it wasn't obvious, but it is true when you look at how much power these amplifiers and the pixels draw versus how much power it takes to slosh charge all the way out of the device using clock lines. In the CCD case, the CMOS imagers are indeed lower power. Another virtue is that they're fast. They're very fast, and this is because they're parallel. And what do I mean by parallel? Well, let me scroll back up. I mean that you can read, let me get a different color. You can read out this pixel simultaneously to reading out this pixel, and at the same time you're reading out this pixel, and all of that happens at the same time you're reading out this pixel because you have an ADC per column. Whereas for C CCDs, you had to shuttle everything out, and everything everybody had to wait their turn. It's kind of a bucket brigade phenomenon. Okay, CMOS imagers are fast. Fast. One is, another reason, another virtue, is that they're easy, I'm putting that in quotes, easy to fabricate. Now I'm not, I don't mean, okay, I don't mean that the, 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 the material science or anything like that is easy. What, I'm, what I mean by easy is that the, the style of fabrication for the CMOS image sensor is very similar to uh, SRAM memory or DRAM memory or the same processes that you use for microchips of variety of various kinds so you don't have to fine-tune your process you don't have to change it much to manufacture a CMOS imager which is very nice what are the vices well the main vice is that it's high noise high noise and that comes from the fact that every pixel has its own am amplifier lots of amplifiers well that's my interpretation of why they're high noise and so in the CCD case where you only had one amplifier or a few amplifiers to worry about characterizing in the CMOS imager case you have a lot of amplifiers to worry about. Let me make a quick note um, even though it's not the focus I want to make a quick note about IR imagers. IR imagers, infrared imagers, all use a CMOS style architecture for the readout and what you'll do is you'll manufacture your photodiode in materials like mercury cadmium telluride uh, HGCDT or indium gallium arsenide and then you'll mate those photodiode materials to a silicon readout that has a CMOS style architecture. So if you scroll back up here and look at this architecture where every pixel has its own amplifier and then you, you read that out on the column this, is, this carries over one to one to infrared imagers. There's a final point about architecture that I want to get to, but I don't think I have time in this video, so I'm going to start a new video.